on this evening of the 9th of November 2019 we are live from London I'm reaching you with every amount of certainty wherever you are on this planet Earth we are gathering in the name of the most high God to quote Kike he who sees it in the open the mighty one in battle we ask him to descend in his majestic power his mighty valor to envelop in each and every one of us wherever we are individual and collectively to go before us to go beside us go behind us to be on the driving seat to drive home this audacious quest for restoration of biafra that in the end not only that we prevail but biafra shall be restored in our lifetime he shall be our beginning and the end this month of november the remaining part of months of month of november the month of December, the main part of 2019 and beyond shall be the most successful, the most progressive, the most history ever for us. Every pit hole, every pothole dog, every snare of the enemy against us shall turn into their own grave. You shall set confusion into the camp of our enemies. You shall continue to torment them May the spirit of our galangos and heroines who have paid the ultimate price on this our divine journey for restoration continue to haunt our enemies and especially those who are very much complicit in their death. It shall never be well with them. Biafra shall be restored in our lifetime because if it has not been for the sacrifices of these are men, these are our women these our brothers and sisters our comrades we will not be where we are today because of what they have done the foundation of the contraption called nigeria has been shaken and the center can no longer hold there is serious confusion along the corridors of power and we ask the most high god to sustain that confusion in their lives do this for us now give us victory and take the glory that the rest of humanity will see a blessing upon our lives and continue to glorify your holy name. To this we say a man and a man and a man. He say, he say, he say, my name is Richard Mefor. I am the deputy leader of indigenous people of Biafran from Abatete. Abatete is in Idemi. Idemi is in Oman is in Biafraland. I am here in a deputizing capacity standing for a great number of Nam the Kanu. Arguably the best of his own kind and his own time. The enigmatic, the charismatic Mazenam de Kano has indeed destroyed that hellish Lugadian contraption called Nigeria. And they have no choice. All we need to do is to stand by his side to make sure that this gospel is indeed concluded and that Biafra is ultimately restored. We are not going to hand this button over to our brothers and sisters who are coming behind us. And in fact, generations of their friends to come, or to our children. We shall complete this task. The only compensation to be paid and to be made and to be worthwhile is for this effort of our gallant heroes and heroes to be compensated in a way that will see the ultimate destruction of the zoo called Nigeria and the restoration of Biafra. What am I saying? The only thing that can compensate for the ultimate sacrifice of our brothers and sisters is that Biafra is restored on their behalf and in their honor. We have no apologies to render. This evening we are as always going to do the needful to preach this gospel as much as we can we want to use the opportunity to salute the courage of our eminent brothers and sisters all the way from different parts of the zoo called nigeria and who have remained very resolute very focused and never allowed any distraction to come to them we are not forgetting our brothers and sisters in Biafra land who are under rain and shine, undergoing different degrees of pains and difficulties. 
we appreciate all of you. We are not forgetting the family members of our departed brethren. You shall be well with all of them, and we must stand in solidarity with all of them any day, any time. We must help one another, we must stand by one another to make sure that we ultimately win together. And if we are to fail, we are going to fail together. We salute our friends who are rendering unimaginable assistance, making sure that Biafra is once again put on the world stage. That unimportant assignment, that effort is still in progress. And as time goes on, of course, you will be convinced that the leadership of IPOB is not keeping quiet. We are moving. The journey has been tortuous. It has not been that easy. And we have not pretended that it has been. But in the end, the spirit of Biafra shall prevail. And ultimately, we shall indeed coast home safely. All we need is to remain resolute and focus, because this journey is gradually coming to an end. We have done more than 80% of this work. The remaining 20% or thereabout remains the most difficult. And that is the state where we are. And that is why all hands must be on deck that everything we need to do should be done. There are those who are running in this journey, on this journey to ultimate restoration of Biafra. There are those who are working. There are those who are talking. There are those who are contributing financially. There are those who are using their intellectual ability to do whatever they can to make sure that this gospel of restoration is put on the front bar. Our enemies dealt with us for the past 50 years. They have arguably wanted to decimate what is left of us. But the Most High God has, at this particular point in time, at this age, in our lifetime, brought somebody like Mazenam the Khan forward. Despite all the sacrifices, despite all the intimidation on his way, he remained result. He remained more than ever before committed. May the souls of our gallant heroes and heroines who have fallen short on this journey continue to rest in the bosom of Mos Mosaico. May the soul of our mother, the mother of all mothers, Nesali Ugeze Okukan continue to rest in the bosom of the Most High God until we all meet to part no more. Their death remains the reason why you will continue to do what you are doing. Why we must complete this journey. Why this race must be consummated, if you like. And IPOB has done obviously why in this direction. But we must not rest on our oars because we still have enormous responsibilities on our shoulders. And that is why we will continue to do what we can. People are asking us, what have you done? What can you do another? And these are the agents of the zoo called Nigeria. They are in our midst. Do not make mistake about it. They are pretending to be IPOB family members as well. They come in and out of us. They mingle with us and among us. And they pretend that they are one with us. But one of the greatest weapons we have against them is that our hands are clean and that there is nothing that they can take out of us. There is nothing secret about us. What has propelled us forward has been the courage the truth that we have continued to propel and we do not have any intention to prevaricate neither are we going to capitulate until what we are looking for is given to us it is very important that at this particular point in time we need to do something 
And that thing we need to do, having experienced the most horrendous terrorism directed against us by the House of Falani, by the zoo authorities, and through the complicit criminal connivance of some unstoppable politicians in Biafaland. The atrocity has been too many, and it is now time for us to do the needful. Our advice to our brothers and sisters in Biafaland going forward, and even with regard to what has happened in the past since 2015, is to make sure that nobody, nobody who has suffered on our journey to this ultimate restoration is left behind. If you have been tortured in any way, if you have been maimed in any way, if you have been imprisoned or even detained in any way, it is your responsibility to come forward and give evidence of what has happened to you. A lot of our people are intimidated that most of them are running away. I don't know why they are so fearful. Because if we don't come forward to present our case to the international community, if we don't come forward to present our case to international criminal court, then we don't have evidence to present. They will say that we have been enjoying ourselves. They will say that nothing has happened to us. That is why we are calling on our people, on our principal servants, especially those in Biafaland, on our coordinators, at the national, at the state, at the senatorial level, or local government and at the zonal as well as at the unity levels to make sure that everybody who has been injured, everybody who has been imprisoned, everybody who has been tortured, everybody who has been killed, that they come forward or that their friends or that the witnesses that saw what happened to them or that their family members come forward because we are going to be sending important delegation to our people how this information is going to be passed and collected we are going to let you know they have killed us enough nobody should be afraid of what will happen tomorrow because whether you come out or you don't come out they are still going to come after you therefore we need to do this work what are we saying here? It is time for accountability. That the zoo officials, that the Fulani terrorists in army and police uniform and their masters will answer to the atrocities that they committed against the Biafran people. Do not come and ask me how and why. Now is the time for us to do the needful. We are going to pass important message to our principal servants and to our family members in Biafaland. Do not run away. If any of our family members have disappeared, it is the responsibility of each and every one of us, and especially those who know the person to come forward and give evidence. It is not fake account. We are not going to accept it for avoidance of doubt. Do not think that coming forward to present fake account or fake narrative of what happened or what you think has happened will get us to anywhere. We are not going to as accept it. Every case that has been brought before the international community must be scrutinized, must be verified, must be investigated. So do not even try to concoct any case or to concoct any incident and come forward with it. We want justice by all means, but we must do it the right way. I don't know how else I'm going to say, uh, say this, but our people must be very vigilant, must be very careful. Our people in a boy at the present time 
who are undergoing different degrees of horror and intimidation from the murderous Fulani terrorists in army and police uniform must not sleep. You must be ready to give an account of what you have seen and what has happened to you if it is for our family members who have died in the process we are encouraging their family members to come forward do not run away do not be intimidated because even if you do they will still come for you there is no going back people think that we are doing nothing but we shall indeed demonstrate to them that we are doing something and nobody no life lost on this journey to restoration shall be in vain very important we are asking for people to cooperate because there's no going back all those who have had their hands directly or indirectly i mean the saboteurs in biafra land at the appropriate time and very soon they are not going to go scot-free mark our words today we have said to you that the heart of this project shall never be allowed to see corruption and we mean every syllable every word every sentence in it this is a live broadcast this evening we have to move on to another topic very important not necessary topic we're passing information to our people we're passing information there are things we need to do should be done and not only that it is done it will be done properly and accordingly we need to be asking ourselves at this particular point in time what is it for us in biafran struggle why are you coming to this struggle why are you involved in this struggle are you coming here for merriment or are you coming here that Biafra be restored? You need to ask yourself that very important question. You need to ask yourself why the international community, why the outside world has not responded to our cry for several decades. You need to ask yourself why is it that our people have been killed, they are still killing us, they are still maiming us, the world is seeing what is happening to us, but they have kept quiet. But in other parts of the zoo called Nigeria, in other parts of the world, war criminals are being, uh, are being brought to account. They are being prosecuted. The killings in Middle Belt are being taken care of. The killings in the core Northern Arewa enclave is being taken care of. In fact, those who even fought Boko Haram from Biafra land, because what they do is to recruit our people from Biafra land and send them to fight Boko Haram and without weapon. And then send Boko Haram terrorists that they have reintegrated into Nigerian army, into Nigerian police to be a fallen. You are all eyewitnesses to this. The people fighting Boko Haram in the northeast part of the zoo called Nigeria, in Arewa enclave, in Zambisa forest in Borono, in Adamawa, and other parts of that northern hellish contraption called Nigeria are all people from Biafra land and people from Yoruba land and people from Middle Belt and they are not giving them any weapons to fight Boko Haram yet every year yet every month yet every quarter of the year the zoo government we always hoodwink the international community and international aid donors to donate billions of dollars in cash and in kind pretending to be fighting Boko Haram pretending to be wiping away Boko Haram 
But Boko Haram is still rampaging. They are deceiving themselves. But in Biafran, where nothing is happening, Biafran that is very peaceful, is militarized, our people are being molested, our people are being kidnapped, our people are being pillaged, or rather our resources. And then the politicians in our land are doing nothing about it. The so-called Fulani terrorists, the fifth most dangerous terrorists as recorded by terrorism index all over the world are being sent to different government houses in Biafra land in Anambra the monster in Anambra government house will you be told you what these people are going to do they are part and parcel of Anambra state government and especially in the area of security they have unfettered, unrestricted assets to government houses. In Enugu State, it's the same thing. If they started even before Anambra. In Eboin, the same thing. And if you say the same people will be saying, oh, you are, you are making it up. We are not making it up because the governor of Anambra State, that monster, that drunkard, that blood sucker, that ritualist, Willie Obiano, was implicated by the spirit of the land, by the spirit of those that he murdered. And he made that confession thinking that he was making an announcement and put a prize of 500,000 on the lives of our people. And then, by implication, empowered Fulani terrorists to continue to kill our people. After all, human life is that cheap. If you kill, you pay 500,000. And that 500,000 Naira he is talking about is very huge amount of money he amacked by the Fulani controlled federal government of Nigeria. That money is there, billions of worthless Naira, and they are going to spend it. On the other hand, some people are jubilating but you don't know that what these people are doing is that they have taken over the security of our land the so-called ruga you're talking about the so-called ruga settlement that we are protesting against has been effectively implemented because they struck deals with state governments Mietiala struck deal. They have a momentum of understanding with state governments in different parts of Biafra land. So instead of coming frontly to do it, they have now stealthily and treacherously as well, in a quiet, devilish manner, used the state governments in Biafra land to implement Ruga. Instead of full and terrorists going to take over the land by themselves, it is now the state government and their agents that will be buying the land for them. Are we lying? We are not lying. Because will you be not confirmed it? About five months ago, there was a Reverend Father in Enugu when Fulani headsmen killed one of the Reverend Fathers and some uh, clergymen protested and went to a new government house. Somebody was saying, or rather thanking a uh, Fulani headsman, thanking Mietiala for protecting them. He was passing a message. That message he was passing is very clear. That Fulani headsmen are in charge of our security so even our vigilantes at community level, villages are not appreciated. They are paying for an enhancement to provide security for us and to protect our lives. The most dangerous ever since 
our existence. So if we are thinking that we are safe, we are not safe. We need to begin to do something. And our politicians must continue to be held accountable. We must remove sentiment in what we're doing. If your father is a traditional ruler, is a community leader, is a politician, is a senator, is a governor or uh, one of the special assistants and all that, you must warn them because the spirit of the land is going to rise and destroy those who are perpetuating all this evil in our society. The spirits of those that were murdered in cold blood are asking for vengeance. This is Radio Beer for that presentation and uh, I am not in a very usual position. This is a makeshift uh, situation or, uh, or location for me that we will do the need for. Fulani Hesme has taken over our land. If we are still thinking that they are coming, they are already in our land and they have had a strong good hold on that that has held us together. There is something that we must consider, and especially hardcore Biafrans. Every hardcore Biafran, especially those in abroad, and it is going to be across board as well, must consider denouncing the zoo citizenship. Nothing will happen. If we are all serious of getting Biafra, we must all denounce the zoo citizenship. The zoo citizenship is worthless. Our allegiance to Nigerian state has been the reason why the Biafra restoration project has been prolonged without us knowing it. Because some of the questions that they are asking us and which some zoo people are asking us is which passport are you using and all that. But of course we know that we are under occupation. But even at that, we must have to do something. Across board, we must have to bring out a date or a period of time in a coordinated way that people who are hard cause renounce the zoo citizenship until we renounce the zoo citizenship nobody will take us seriously because if we don't do anything along that line it means that we are complicit in what is happening to us there are some courageous Biafrans in the diaspora that have renounced their zoo passport and citizenship and they have not died i can tell you they have not died if you are a hardcore biafra and you are abroad your life is in danger in the zoo called nigeria so you must have to do something very drastic to make sure that you get residence where you are there are so many of our people who are working from morning till now that is very fine to make ends meet but they don't have papers but because of selfishness they attach themselves so much to the job that they are doing the day they are caught every of those effort that they have made goes in vain what am I saying here? There are some of our people who are in this part of the world, in Europe, in America, in Australia, in Asia, and I wouldn't say Africa, because you see zoo by extension, who are going about and they don't have residence permits. And you call yourself a Biafran. 
and you want to do it through the back door it is not done by wishful thinking if you want Biafra to protect you you must have to come out and declare for Biafra openly and I can assure you Biafra shall not disappoint you go and ask those who have done it we were the first set of people that did this I am a living example therefore I will not tell you anything that will derail you our people in diaspora both those who have their residence those who are citizens those who have no papers at all must renounce the zoo citizenship that is the only way that anybody any foreign body any government will take you seriously nothing will happen i tell you rather you will get protected as an endangered person as somebody whose life is in danger for our people who are in the contraption called nigeria you will be taken as somebody who is under occupation and until we until we courageously do this nobody will take us seriously and so we must have to think seriously about this we must have both emotional and physical separation from the zoo called nigeria it has to be seen to be done for us to advance to another level because the argument of the international community is that you are all nigerian citizens and that you are still enjoying the benefit of being part of nigerian federation and how can you demonstrate that you are no more part of the zoo called nigeria you have to come out in the open and make public pronouncement there is no going back nothing will happen they may put us in more difficulties but i can assure you that there is no difficulty that these people will put us through that will be more than what they have put us now the only people who will be thinking or kicking against what we are saying here at the moment are one nigerian is who are thinking that somehow and um, someday the zoo will get better the zoo will never get better you will be used as sacrificial lamb you will continue to be a guinea pig experiment in the zoo called nigeria until you begin to do something all over the world people who were very much conversant with what self-determination is all about people who have passed through the liberation struggle and emerged victorious know what it is go and ask the people of south sudan go and ask our people who are citizens of other countries go and ask the people of east timor go to the balkans and ask them what they did they courageously renounced the citizenship of the occupation parent country that is dominating them and they declared mass protests they declared they went on strike their civil servants did their politicians did their businessmen did their students did and so until we coordinate our effort along this line the zoo called nigeria will never take us seriously even though ipb has shaken them and there's no going back we must go a step further to completing this job because in the mega in hell these people have dealt with us and they are thinking that we are playing they are thinking that we are just backing like uh, 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 frustrated individuals we need to do something very important we need to do something along this line and if we don't do it 
we will have ourselves to blame. Nobody is holding Biafra from coming. We are the people, the people of Biafra, the people holding Biafra from coming. Because we have not done essentially what we need to do. The world has moved forward. This is a 21st century. This is a digital age. And everything is changing. And therefore, we will not be that conservative as to remain in the past. We must acknowledge that circumstances are changing and that we need to continue to improvise and adapt. That is why we are peer friends. That is why we shall continue to set the agenda for the contraption called Nigeria. Our people who want to do this should begin to make contact. Our people who want to take this struggle to another level should begin to make contact. Because we need to renounce the zoo for what it is. Go and ask the Kurds in Iraq what they are doing and Iran what they are doing. There are thousands, if not millions, of them who are stateless persons. And anywhere they go, they are recognized. We need to take this struggle to another level, even though we are on a diplomatic shuttle and we have gone to a level that we're not going to go back anymore. People will continue to ask us, what have you done? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And we are telling them proudly that at this stage, we owe nobody no explanation. Let them go and hang themselves. They will be rest assured that the leadership of IPOB as constituted at the moment is not going to lead you astray or disappoint you. And the heart of this project we continue to vow shall never be allowed to see corruption. They will come against us, they will intimidate us. They will kill us, they will try to maim us. But in the end we shall prevail. Anybody that see that man, that servant of the Most High God, Mazin Namdi Khan, must continue to salute him, must continue to pay homage to his courage, to his resilience, to his commitment, despite all the intimidation and danger. Because this journey we have embarked upon, a lot of people did not know that we will be where we are today. The zoo underestimated the resolve behind this journey that we have embarked upon. Because they thought that somehow they are going to bribe them. Somehow they are going to intimidate them. Somehow they will be like those who have come before them. And we have proved them wrong. And we shall continue to prove them wrong. This is really a follow presentation. I uh, will begin to take call at this particular point in time. And the number to call is plus four four seven four zero five nine six four one four six plus four four seven four zero five nine six four one four six. Once again, plus four four seven four zero five nine six four one four six. That's the number to call. If you call this number, we shall take your call otherwise we shall proceed to give way to other people from different parts of the world that already be a fire crew to of course usher in their own program i want to thank each and every one of our brothers and sisters who have continued to support this struggle we urge you to remain focused on result because times are different but we are not backing out saboteurs are in an almighty mess because the harder they come against us the harder they are disappointed the back in emily <laughs>
dominate and equally wishes to wipe the entire Biafra nation. They are now officially.